Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are the Multihull Group, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in catamarans. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance, and so much more, so you can build confidence in your catamaran handling ability. In this episode, we're going back to basics. Let's talk about what to do when you arrive on board your boat. Hello and welcome back to another Inspire and Learn episode with me, Joe Fox, from the Multi-Hull Group. Today we're going to go right back to basics on board this brand new Lagoon 42 that we have here. We're going to be running through the startup and the pre-departure procedure that you would follow on a Lagoon 42, a Lagoon of any size or a catamaran of this type. Come on board with me and we'll show you how to get this boat up and running and ready for a day out. As we step onto the back of the boat, We'll start on the outside and make our way in. So on either side at the stern of the boat, we have an engine compartment. So before I activate the boat, get the engines running, I'm just gonna check. I'm gonna do a visual check of the engine bay. Now, this will tell me if there's any oil splatter, um, unwanted salt water, and just give me an indication of whether the engines are in a, in a healthy condition. I can see looking in here that it's all good. I'm also gonna check that my battery isolators are on. So down here on the port side of the engine compartment, I can see my port motor positive, my house bank positive, and a negative here for both of those banks. They're both on, which means my engine will start when I want it to, and also my house bank, my service batteries, so my fridges, uh, my navigation is all on and uh, ready to go from the main batteries. The final check before we close this compartment will be to make sure that the emergency stop on top of the engine has not been activated. So this orange switch here, if that gets hit or if someone's working on the engine, that'll disable the engine when it's not running. So if that has been hit, then the engine won't start. So we just need to make sure that that's in the run position so that when we start up at the helm station, we're all good to go. Heading over to the port side now, in the port engine bay is much the same as the engine bay before. We're looking for oil splatter, any salt water, checking the bilges down the bottom as well, as well as making sure that the engine isolator battery on this side is turned on and ready to go. And I can see that my safety switch, as on the other side, is in the run position. So I know that the engines will start when I want them to. Now behind me on the port side, on every Lagoon 42, is the shore power lead. Now we need to disconnect this. Important that you disconnect it from the shore first so that then when you unplug this from the boat this is not live you know if you drop it in the water accidentally you won't blow the sockets on the marina now that I've unplugged the whole cord I can either leave this on the dock if I know I'm coming back here or if I'm going to another marina another berth elsewhere then I'll take this with me so I can plug in when I get there now that the boat is disconnected from the mains power I'll go inside the boat now and what we're looking for in here is our systems ancillaries and navigation electronics so if we make our way down here to the navigation electronics panel. First and foremost, we turn on our lights so that we can see. Master switch for the lights here brings all the lights on as long as they're on at the sockets. Here, my water heater, I'll turn that on. Battery charger should be on anyway, connected to the shore power. And then my AC plugs for both port and starboard here will both be on. I'll turn the fridge on so my beers go cold. I'll leave my auxiliary because that's just a spare, that's not connected to anything. I'll turn the water pump on so that we get fresh water coming out of the taps. Bilge pumps down here in the middle at the bottom. I'm just gonna press these momentarily. And I can hear, you won't be able to hear it on the mic, but I can hear that those bilge pumps are operational. So that's just a safety check to know that the bilge pumps are working before you leave. So I think the most important switch here that you need to turn on before you leave the dock is the navigation instruments. Now this brings your chart plotters to life, it brings your weather data, your depth, brings your autopilot to life, and they're all you know, incredibly important. As Soon as I get off the dock, I need to know my depth, I need to know my wind speed, and I also need the autopilot when I get outside the moorings so that I've got that other crew member. So if you're gonna get one of these and forget all the rest, turn your navigation instruments on here. It's daytime, so we don't need navigation lights, but if it was dark, then we'd either use steaming lights or sailing lights. It's important before you head out on your boat that you know your tank levels. So importantly, your fuel, but also importantly is your fresh water. So on the right-hand side of this panel here, I've got fuel tank number one, which is on my port side, and I've got fuel tank number two, which is on my starboard side. I can see they're both just under full, which is fantastic. 
top middle. I've got tank number one. There's only one water tank on this. It's a big 600 litre tank, but I can see that that's half full. So I might go top that up before we leave the dock. Other controls down here are my generator. Also down here on the left are the selection switches for the air conditioning and the main 230 volt systems, whether you're using the generator or getting your supply from the shore. Finally, down here is the inverter control. Now, because we've unplugged from the shore power, we do not have 230 volt power anymore. So if I do want to charge my laptop or you know, use the microwave, under the batteries or with the operation of the engines, I'd just have to turn on the inverter so that my 230 volt sockets are live. Moving up to the chart table, I'll take the cover off the VHF, cover off the radio, and I'll turn the VHF on. I'll set this to channel 16 so that I know I can hear distress calls and if I need to make a distress call, it's all set and ready to go. Finally, to get the vibes going, you've got to have the right vibes. Connect your Bluetooth and choose your favorite song. The last thing to check before you leave the dock and start your engines is the bilges, just to make sure there's no water in there so that if you do get water in there, you know that it's come from somewhere. Let's go and have a look. We'll go down on the port side and on a Lagoon 42, both bilges are just aft of midships on each side. So access to the bilges on the Lagoon 42, in this case, it's just under this carpet. Not all boats have carpet on them is in this locker here and I can see down in the sump nice and dry a couple of droplets in there but that in all to all intents and purposes is a very dry bilge so that's exactly what we want to see so we're all set to go now and we can go start the engines and we're really preparing the navigation station so pulling all the plotter covers off the navigation instruments I'll take these downstairs and secure them out of the way so they don't blow away in the wind engine covers here I've checked that my wheel is centered and my throttles are in neutral. Very important that the throttles are in neutral so that the props aren't spinning when you start the engines. So whenever you're starting up the boat, preparing to leave the dock, there are four things that you should be checking. There's a, um, a trick I like to use for this, and that is west. Number one, you should check the weather. Forecast, tides, currents around your local waterway, check the weather so that you know what's going to happen. Number two is E. So WE, engines, check the engines, visual inspection for oil and the like that we did at the beginning of this video. On these Yanmars, we've got Yanmar 57 horsepowers on this lagoon. Hold down the power button and that's your first click in, uh, in the ignition of your car, if you like. We see that the screens have come up. We've got the hour readings and the RPM, the revolutions per minute. If I hold down the start button, fires the starter motor and you can see RPM is now up to 800. Same on this side and we're all good to go. I do the one on the starboard side first that's because it's furthest away from me so I can hear it start up and then I do the one closer to me. If the helm station is on the starboard side then you do the one on the port side first. Once the engines are running just check that you have cooling water coming out of your exhaust and you know that there's plenty of cold seawater going in to cool down the engine to stop it from overheating. I can hear it now on this side and I'll go check on that side as well. Now the S in West is for the steering so you just want to make sure that your steering is working. Now I can see on here I've got a rudder feedback indicator. I can see that as I move the wheel the rudders are moving as well. And finally the T in West is your transmission. If you're on a larger catamaran the T can also mean a thruster. Before I let any of the lines go on the dock I'll put you know, my port engine into forwards and I'll look for the prop wash out the back. I'll put the port engine into reverse and I'll wait to feel the boat being pulled back and then I know as soon as I drop the lines that I do actually have um, working transmission. So now we are ready to leave the dock. Unfortunately this is where we're going to leave you. We do hope you enjoyed this episode on getting to know the startup procedure on your catamaran or on your lagoon. My name is Joe Fox from the Multi-Hull Group. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do give us a like and a subscribe on YouTube if you would like to be updated with more content. Down the line, we will look at more back to basics maneuvers on simple operation for entry level cruisers to get to know their new boats safely. Join us in the next episode for more inspirational and educational content so that you can feel confident in your catamaran handling ability. We'll see you then.